And I had one of those great peak experiences that I'll probably never have again in life, which was I suddenly had a sense of purpose in my life to not just write good stories and find good stories, but to try to get this couple to let me help them to tell their story. So I used my savings. I went to Holland and met these people. Uh, and thankfully, I was able to convince them to tell their story. Of course, we were all kind of stupid. I mean, these are ordinary people who, uh, you know, they weren't really famous. Anne was famous. Anne's father was famous. They'd continued to live a very quiet life. Uh, and none of us had any idea, really, what a big story it was. I mean, I had a sense that it was sort of an endangered story. You know, it was like a frog that was, you know, going to disappear, or the, a leopard that was going to disappear, or a language that was going that they needed to tell the other side of this story. And suddenly, after we'd started working on it, this idea burst into the publishing world, and suddenly, when we finished, we had a huge best-selling book. And it was published in many, many, many languages. And they were shocked, and I was shocked. Uh, and it, as it happened, it totally changed my life, because when I had sort of entered this world that I've been talking about this past that my parents wanted to forget about. Uh, I, first of all, had felt a kind of satisfaction and a sort of spiritual oneness with the world that I'd never felt before. Uh, I felt that I was doing something useful by being a kind of catalyst to getting these people to tell their story. And uh, I liked that feeling. And after I'd written, we had, this book was published and went all around the world, I started to become an insider in this world of Holocaust, of World War II, of survivors. Uh, and I started collecting endangered what I considered endangered stories. Uh, Oh, we time wise. Okay. Um, anyway, since then I've published seven books. Uh, five of them are relating to this subject matter. One, particularly this one, has 25 stories that had been lost, I thought, or almost lost, that I tried to retrieve or at least see written. Uh, but again, why do we all know Anne Frank? I mean, it's really incredible, because right now, this story is, she was born in 1919. She'll be 80 years old, if, would, would have been 80 years old next year if she were alive. Uh, there aren't many Jews left in the world. She was Jewish, as we know. There are only about 12 million Jews in the world. Most people who know her aren't Jewish, may not even be interested in that subject. But why do we still know her? Does anybody have any thoughts on that? Why she still resonates in some way with this world that is now so different? Any theories? OK, well, I have some theories. <laughs> Thank you for not interrupting so I can go right into my theory. Uh, I believe that what has made Anne an, uh, an icon, I mean, this photograph uh, is really an icon. Uh, and I don't think what's made her an icon and what's made people interested in her is her suffering. I don't think it's her suffering. Because when you read Anne's diary, you know, it begins, she's an ordinary 12-year-old girl who gets a, uh, a diary for her 13th birthday. And the frame around her life just happens to be the fact that her, 
a war start, and sh she and her family happened to be Jewish, not religious at all, in fact. And shortly after she starts writing her diary, her family has to hide because the occupying Nazis in her country, Holland, are rounding up Jewish people and sending them somewhere far away to camps. And no one knows what's going to happen to them. But Anne's father finds a place for uh, their, his family and another family in back of his business to hide, right in the middle of Amsterdam. But Anne doesn't really write about injustice, and she doesn't write about feeling uh, uh, downtrodden. I mean, she's sort of you know, she, she doesn't get it. She, she's sort of amazed at why, why Hitler and others are against her religion. But she doesn't really dwell on it. She's much more interested in the new boyfriend, the crush she has, her friends. She has a lot of conflict with her mother. Uh, she adores her father. She loves to describe the hiding place. I mean, she starts writing about her life as a typical teenage girl. And this is really, in my opinion, what people relate to. Uh, the ordinariness of being a teenager, whether you're you know, in Baltimore or whether you are in war-torn Amsterdam or whether you're in Kenya or whether you're in uh, Czech Republic. Uh, those same things are going on with all of us. I mean, the truth is, it's really an accident that Anne is a Jewish girl. I mean, she could be from Pakistan, Albania, Turkey, Iraq, Rwanda, Philippines, Albania, the Congo. And I realized that what attracted me to her to, to the story of Meep and that time was when I was a teenager, the fact that I related to her as a teenage girl, but later in life when I discovered Meep's story and wrote it was my attraction for not the victim, but my attraction for a rescuer, somebody who had had courage to help the victim. And, uh, and this is what really intrigued me about Meep and her husband and people like them who during that time had really risked their lives to help other people. And it still intrigues me to this day. And I think I was particularly attracted to Meep and Jan because what they did, they didn't do for politics. I mean, they were people who had political uh, opinions. Uh, they didn't do it for religion. Uh, they didn't do it for money. There were people who rescued but did it for money. The reason they did it was because Anne and her family were friends, period. They did it out of friendship, the value of friendship. And what I was attracted to was that, uh, having that kind of principle. And the ordinariness of all of them. Now in this story, I collect that sort of the touchstone of the stories I collect. There's stories of kindness. There's stories of friendship. And if I have any credo in life, it's really these values. Uh, in fact, in this story, even though it is set in World War II and has many Jewish survivors, it's also the story of non-Jewish people in that war. It's the story of, in fact, one of my subjects was a German fellow whose father was a Nazi, and it's about his survival. And in a way, this book is a kind of honoring of all the suffering 